guys, what's up? Serena Apia here from thriftdiving.com and today we are asking two questions. Question number one, can you remove chalk paint from wood furniture? Is it possible? Has anyone ever tried to remove chalk paint from furniture? We're gonna test it out today and see if our kids are gonna hate us in 20 years when they're stripping all the paint that we have put on all the good antique vintage wood. And the second question is, are there times when you should not paint wood furniture? Because there's at least five times when I say, Mm -mm. Put that paintbrush down, girlfriend. Walk away. We're going to talk about it in this video. Number one, you should not be painting that amazing china cabinet if Grandma Jenkins is rolling over in her grave. If your grandmother would roll over in her grave because you painted her antique china cabinet from like 1890 when she was born, please do not paint it. These are antiques. These are antiques that have value to your family. So in those cases, I would say step away. Not everything has to be painted, especially if it has that family value that your family would get really, really upset if you put paint on it. Number two, do not paint that piece of wood if you just bought a can of Rust-Oleum. Okay, there are some brands of paint, there are some types of paint that are just not suitable for furniture. So in the video that I did earlier this week, and I have a link down in the description with a really great blog post that has all of my favorite furniture paints. There are so many brands of furniture paint on the market now that you don't have to go and just pick up any old, you know, regular paint. There was a project that a friend of mine had done a long time ago with some really gorgeous chair, and she and her daughter put I don't even know what kind of paint on this. It was not even just a regular wall latex. I think it was just some other type of like, oh, paint that should not have been on this chair. So she paid me to strip it off. And I can tell you, after using toothbrushes, safety pins, everything to strip this chair, I was like, you know what? If you're not using the right kind of paint, please do not paint wood furniture because it will be a nightmare trying to remove it. So the question is, what kind of paint should you use for furniture? Well, I did a video the other day, which I'll link to in the description. I think I'll also link to it up there that talks about furniture paints. There are so many different brands of furniture paint on the market today that you could literally choose any one and get really, really good results. So don't feel that you have to you know, use inferior products or use things that are just not made for furniture. And I'll also include the link down in the description. You can find more information about my favorite top 10 furniture paints. And uh, yeah, you'll get good results. Number three, do not paint that gorgeous antique chair unless you have Googled it. You have to ask Papa Google and Mama eBay. I can guarantee you that if you put paint on that furniture, the value, just went down. I bought an amazing drafting table from the thrift store. It was so cool. I mean, it was like, I think from the 60s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I don't know. And I was this close, this close to putting paint over it because it was at a time when I thought everything should be painted. If it's wood, it should be painted. No, I looked it up on eBay and saw that this drafting table was actually sold for about $300. So thankfully I did not put any paint on the top and I didn't ruin it. Something to think about, make sure that you do consult Google and eBay before you paint anything so that you don't ruin it. But if you are just using this in your house and you don't care if you are putting paint over something that's worth three, $400, go ahead and paint it. It's yours. You're not trying to sell it. You don't care if it damages the, the, the wood, you just want it to be a certain color. Have at it. Number four, do not paint wood furniture if you are just trying to be trendy. See, right now, painted furniture is all the rage. And this is what I say, go to Home Goods because Home Goods follows the trend. And when you go to Home Goods, you're not seeing a lot of colorful painted furniture. You're actually seeing a lot of natural wood that looks like driftwood or reclaimed wood. Wood is making a comeback. And if you are just trying to be trendy and you think, well, I'm just gonna paint it because that's what everyone's doing, let that not be your reason. I could have sworn that I had five, five reasons. Here's the big takeaway. If you love a piece of wood furniture and you want to paint it, by all means, paint it. You know, as long as you're not hurting anyone, as long as your family isn't going to disown you, as long as, you know, you're not planning to resell something or hoping that something has value and then you've just destroyed it. It's really about how you want your home to feel, how you want your home to look. And if you find a great piece of furniture and you think it would look great with a black shiny paint, by all means, 
you know, get that black shiny paint if that's what you want. Just make sure that you know what you're painting. And I think for myself, the more that I find out about wood furniture, the more that I have an appreciation for it. I wrote a post, a really good post that I think you should look at. It's called Seven Things That You Must Know About Wood Before You Refinish or Build Your Next Project. And I think once you look at this, you'll, you'll have a better appreciation for wood. I will leave the link down in the description and I'll also link to it up there in the little corner. You don't know, unless you understand more about wood, you don't know what you may be covering up. You may in fact have a really great piece of wood. And there are some examples of projects that I've done that I could have very well just slapped a coat of paint on it and called it a day. Like my mid-century modern dresser. And it wasn't until I stripped it that I realized that I had this beautiful grain. And even though I had some problems with the project, the grain was just beautiful. So don't feel that you have to paint everything just because it's what's modern, it's what's trendy. Look at the piece, make sure that you're not doing something that harms a family heirloom. Make sure that you're not totally destroying some like 1600th art of, you know, a piece of furniture from like 1600, something crazy like that. Remember, this is your home. You are the one that has to come home every day and look at the furniture and there's nobody else that's really going to be criticizing you, right? Unless you have a blog or a YouTube channel and you put it all out there for people to see. That's the only time people are really going to know what's in your house aside from your family members. But that's why you shouldn't paint Grandma Jenkins china cabinet, no. So let's go outside now. We are going to do a demonstration. Is there a way to strip any Sloan chalk paint so that if you decide you want to strip something back to its natural wood, how easy or how difficult will that be? We're gonna go outside now and we're gonna see if we can strip chalk paint. So when I'm stripping paint from furniture, I always have these chemically resistant gloves. I always tend to use these. It's just a good practice to cover your hands. And I like to use Blue Bear. You know, it's a little safer. It doesn't have any methylene. Methylene, I guess that's what it's called, methylene chloride, and it is made with soybeans. One thing that I noticed with this is that it doesn't have the same kind of stinky odor that, you know, some of the other strippers do. No, well, it's pretty, it's pretty mild, actually. I think you might even be able to use this inside, but don't take my word for it. I, I will research that. This was $22.99. I got it from a woodworking store, and I think if you get it online, the price is comparable, but it's just a little safer to use than some of the other stuff. I'm not going to put a lot in there because we're not stripping this whole cabinet. So we're going to apply some. We're just going to do a little area and then see if we're actually able to get some of this Annie Sloan chalk paint off. So I do tend to use one of these putty knives when I'm stripping things. And because you don't want to gouge your wood, you know, you can kind of run this across the, the, the road or the sidewalk and just kind of doll it down a little bit because otherwise it can gouge your wood. So you don't want that to happen. So this is the piece that we are testing today. I found it at the thrift store for like $20. I painted it a couple years ago with some chalk paint, any Sloan chalk paint. And I don't know, I just, I have not been moved by this piece, guys. It's small, it's skinny. I've not been able to find anything to do with it. It's cracked and while I could, you know, while I could probably fix that and replace it, I just don't know if I want to. I mean, it's cute, but I don't know. And it, it's, it, you'd have to secure it to the wall because it falls over so easily. So I don't know. I'm just ready to be done with it. I did put some Beyond Paint on top just recently, maybe like in the last several weeks. So we're gonna test that out too and see how easy it is to remove that and the chalk paint as well. I'm gonna put some here. A lot of times when I'm stripping furniture, I will put two coats, um, one coat first, let it on, for, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'll do another coat because I find that it generally takes two, two pass-throughs. All right, we're gonna put some on the Beyond Paint. We're gonna see how easy that is to strip too. This paint is breaking up really easily. And over here on the Beyond Paint, it doesn't look like it's breaking up as easily. So we will see. All right, it's been about 10, maybe even 15 minutes. And now we're ready to see if it's easy to remove chalk paint. And it's coming off pretty easily. And I can see the previous color that was on here, which was not something painted by me, is coming off pretty easily. All right, let's see if this comes up easily. Yep, comes up just as easily. 
Ooh, that's disgusting. The paint or the finish that was on this cabinet when I bought it is coming up as well. So one thing that we have learned is that you know, if you paint your wood furniture, is it going to be, you know, the, the end of that furniture? No, not at all. You'll have a, a heck of a job, you know, stripping it off, but you can see that the Blue Bear actually worked pretty good. Uh, the fumes are not killing me. There's hardly any fumes, actually, and I believe it's safe enough to use inside the house. So there, you know, we've got some of the, this is what, probably pine. We've got some of the pine showing through. Oh, now we need somewhere to, to scrape this stuff. I'm gonna see if I can dump it in here. We can strip this thing pretty easily and you know, there's not really any consequences. I think because there was some white paint underneath of here, it did protect the wood and you know, you see we've got a nice clean wood here. I think if we had done a darker color, if we had put a red or something on bare wood, we probably would have had a lot more difficulty getting out that color because, you know, those dark pigments in the paint will stain your wood. But before we go, here's a tip. If you decide that you want to paint something, always put a coat of shellac over it first. This way, it's sort of like your nails, right? For all the women out there who've painted their nails, when you're putting on a red coat or a coat that has a lot of pigment, what happens to your nails when you take it off? It's stained, right? That's what happens to your nails. Well, that's what happens to wood. It gets stained. So to prevent that, we put a base coat. So think of your furniture that way as well. If you're not sure if you're gonna strip something later, if you decide to paint it and maybe wanna strip it later, put a coat of shellac, put that base coat, so that later when you go back and you wanna strip it, it'll be much easier and the wood would not have been damaged by the pigments. So what did we learn in this video? Well, we learned a couple things. There are times when you should not paint wood furniture because you will destroy the value and your family may disown you. <laughs> However, if you want to paint wood furniture, it's not the end of the world. If it's a piece you're going to be using in your house and one day you're going to decide, you know what, I think I don't want this to be blue anymore. I want it to be a natural wood. There are agents, stripping agents, that you can use to strip this away. And like I mentioned, Blue Bear, I did look up while I stopped the camera, I looked up, you can use this inside. I told you it doesn't have the strong odor that a lot of the other stripping agents do. You know, it has a little bit of an odor, so of course you keep your windows open, keep your windows open, but you can use this inside. It's not something that is going to, you know, give you a headache like some of those things. Um, still, just make sure you wear your gloves. But yeah, you can strip this right inside your house and totally transform your furniture. And if people say, oh my God, you're painting wood, you tell them, you know what? Serena said I can strip this. <laughs> All right, guys, well, if you enjoyed this little tutorial and uh, if you want to see more, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Be sure to go back to thriftdiving.com and if you enter your email and your name, I will send you five ebooks and printables and checklists, things to get you started with DIY. And you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another video because it's 31 days of video. All right, so I will see you tomorrow and you can find me at thriftdiving.com. 